Hey y'all and welcome back to another episode of Blemished. My name is Frances Cantu and this is Wife Stuff. This is my channel. Thank y'all so much for clicking on this video and taking the time out of your day to watch it. So today's episode is is a collab. I'm so excited. I had posted on my Instagram that I wanted to do some collaborations. I had a few people reach out and yay. I was so excited y'all. I was really like, oh, is anybody even gonna collab with me? Does anybody want I had one particular person that I love so very much reach out to me and her name is Val. She is from fake. I'm sorry, she had a name change from the whites. Sorry Val, I'm so sorry girl. Um, she just recently changed her channel name, so sorry, forgive me. But she reached out to me and said that she would love to do a collaboration. And we had actually been talking about something, not necessarily the collaboration, but one day we were talking uh, through Instagram messaging and we were talking about how adoption and all of these things. And she was like, I would one day like really like to actually hear your story and all of that, what your perspective is being an adult who has been adopted. Naturally, when, you know, we she reached out to me and said, yeah, she would wanna do the collab, this is the subject that we landed on. I had already planned on doing this episode anyways, and then it just so happened that when I put that Instagram post out there and Valerie contacted me, like it all lined up, like God's timing is perfect. So I said all of that to say, please, please, please go check out her channel as well and go and watch her video. I'm sure it's gonna be great. It's gonna be a totally different perspective than mine because she is a foster mom and an adoptive mom. So she has a definitely different perspective. Let's get into today's episode. So obviously I am talking about my adoptive story. Now I want to let y'all know that this story is very complicated. Well, it's complex to me as I'm telling it, but it's probably pretty simple because dates and time, like I'm 32 years old, y'all. Like so much time has passed and I am just, the way my mind is set up these days, I just don't know um, everything. Um, I literally walk into the living room, don't know why I'm there. I really apologize if this seems all over the place or if I'm stumbling over my words, like I said, it, it's just been a long time since these things have taken place. Um, I've been living on my own since I was 17 years old. So, you know, to show me some grace, people. Show me some grace. I didn't, I wasn't like in a foster home or any of that. That's not how my adoption story takes place also i didn't i wasn't like officially adopted like there was no paperwork that said oh she is this person's kid it was more of a guardianship that i was kind of passed around from home to home which i'll get into and it'll make more sense but no my story isn't like oh you know i was in this foster home and then i went to this foster home it wasn't that although I guess technically I was being fostered by these different homes, but they were within our family, if that makes sense. So when I was born, my biological mom married this man who I wouldn't consider my stepdad, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna say he was my stepdad. He was not, you know, he was not my biological father. She was already pregnant with me when they got married. So my mom's husband at the time, my stepdad, I actually at six weeks of age began living with his parents, which his mom was remarried. And so I was living with my grandma and my step grandpa. And I live with them from six weeks till three years old when my grandma passed away. And then I solely lived with my grandpa until he passed away when I was about, I, I wanna say like seven or eight. I know I was in the second grade, so I guess I'll have to do the math. Beginning six weeks of second grade and I'm an August baby, so. I was probably either seven or just turned eight. So then after he passed away, he had it in his will that I would, if anything should ever happen to him, that I would go to the second oldest brother, which was his stepson also. So this, my stepdad had two younger brothers. My stepdad was the oldest, and then there was the middle brother, and then the youngest brother. So I went and lived with the middle brother 
after my grandpa passed away. I moved in with him and his wife and they had two kids. They were older than me though. They were in their teenage years and I was still, you know, playing with toys and stuff. I lived with them for a while up until I was in about the fifth grade. And then in the fifth grade, I would always come during summertime and I would come and visit my other uncle, uh, which was the youngest brother. I would always come and visit him and his wife and their three boys and I would hang out with them um, because mainly I grew up around them when I was with my grandpa. I knew them very well and so I would come and stay with them for the summers and then I would always go back. Well, this particular summer, I just enjoyed being at their house. I enjoyed the family time. I enjoyed, you know, spending time with um, my aunt. I enjoyed all of it. I enjoyed spending time with the younger cousins and we had more in common and I just felt more at home. I had made the decision to ask my aunt and uncle if they cared if I moved in with them and I lived there permanently. We made some arrangements and everything got settled and that is what we did. I had been living there a couple of months after that and I made the decision to go and ask my aunt and uncle if it would be okay if I called them mom and dad. They have been my mom and dad since I was about 13 years old, probably 12, um, 12 or 13 around that time. I've never looked back. I've never considered them anything other than that. Um, I consider my three cousins, my brothers. Like I said, my story's a little bit different. It's not like the typical, I went from a foster home, but you see now what I'm saying, we, I did jump from place to place. We stayed within the family unit, technically by marriage, but I'm not related to any of my family by blood or anything like that. I mean, I guess in a way I was adopted. I, I've always carried, or I had always carried the last name up until obviously I got married. They've always been my parents. I've never considered them anything else. I love them as my parents. I've always loved them as my parents when I share when I say my mom and dad, that's who I was always talking about. And I've never considered my biological mom like my mom. Um, I did have contact with her when I was younger, up until I was in about sixth grade is the last time that I talked to her. There were some things that were going on behind the scenes that I, I don't wanna throw her under the bus or anything or seem like I'm coming for her or that I have any resentment or bitterness toward her because I don't. Um, I don't really feel any type of way toward her. I just feel like it's what God wanted for my life. That is where I was, I'm where I was supposed to be. I don't feel hurt or upset. Now, I'm not gonna say I never did because there was a point and there are times when I've allowed that to maybe affect me, but for the most part, no, it doesn't affect me day to day. I don't harbor any bad feelings. I just kind of accepted that that's what my life is gonna be. That was who I, this is who I am. And of course I've had moments of curiosity. I won't sit here and lie to you. I've had thoughts of, oh, do I look like her? You know, I've had just these thoughts in the back of my mind, like do, you know, when I do certain things, is that because that's how she did it? You know, because a lot of times we don't realize it because you know, we're just living life, but we take a lot of things. Sometimes there's nurture and then there's nature. And my daughter, there are things that she does that I'm like, you would never know that I did that as a kid. So that has to be ingrained in me. That is something that is coming through my DNA. And so there are things like that that I think about. Um, I also think about, she also had three other children. And so I think about that, like my biological brothers and sisters, you know, things like that. But I, I've never dwelled on it. I've never sat there and gone, oh, woe is me. I've just kind of been like, you know, if I find out, I find out. And if I don't, I don't. The only thing that piques my curiosity more than that is who my biological father is. I still to this day don't know. I don't know if I'll ever know, but maybe one day I will find out. And if I do, I do. And if I don't, I don't. But I know who, whose name I carry and I'm okay with that. Like I'm okay with my parents being my parents and who I, who God chose for me. So 
as far as my perspective on that goes yes of course i have curiosity but it doesn't keep me up at night i'm not like again beating myself up or you know i do i have i don't have any resentment or hard feelings toward her i just i don't know her so i don't know how to feel um, I don't know how I would even feel if she contacted me. I have gone back and forth about that. Like, oh my goodness, you know, I have this YouTube channel. And I mean, I know it's like one in a million chance, but what if she ever watched one of my videos? You know, what if she ever commented on one of my videos? What would I do? You know, I've had those thoughts, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't know. I guess I'll just find out if that ever happened. But I absolutely love the people who got to raise me i love them very dearly my dad actually passed away some a couple you know a few years back i loved him very dearly i learned a lot from him i didn't realize how much of a sponge or how much i was taking in from my dad like things that he likes to do um, that i didn't realize that you know i would be looking for um in in a husband or you know things like that um one of those being you know he was always working with his tools um he was always building something like he always was making something for my mom and i never realized you know those little qualities that i like to do like i love doing diy projects and stuff and that's my dad it's just little things like that that just make my heart smile and you never realize whew, I didn't expect to get emotional. You never realize the impact um, that a person who comes into, whew, I guess what I wanted to say or what I was trying to say without crying um, is you never realize the impact a person can have in your life, especially a parent. Um, I didn't, you know, I never really realized how meaningful it was to have parents. Yeah, that is my story. That is who I am. That is my adoption story or whatever you want to call it. I'm not sure because technically I wasn't adopted, but you know, I was. And more than anything, I want to touch on if I'm going to touch on adoption, I have to touch on the adoption that I was adopted into the kingdom. I was adopted by a good, good father. Um, not only did God allow a wonderful man to come into my life and be an influence, you know, a mom too, as well. My heavenly father is amazing and he is better than any earthly dad. He is literally there at every waking moment, anytime I need him he is there with open arms saying yep it's okay child yep it's okay so if you haven't been adopted into the kingdom please don't wait don't wait to get your papers served to you go and run to god and he will welcome you with open arms anyways i feel like my story was all over the place but hopefully you caught some of that and you understand a little bit about who i am and i hope that you'll go and check out valerie's channel don't forget go check out her channel because i'm sure she's gonna have a very different perspective than me i will see y'all in the next episode until next time god bless y'all and go and be a light out there